찬송가 112장을 부르시면서 금요철 예배를 준비하시겠습니다 
만민 찬양 52장 영광 2를 부르시겠습니다 주님 나시는 주님 탄생하시는 아버지 하나님 사랑의 마음 우리 위해 구원의 길 사랑으로 다시 찬송가 125장을 부르시겠습니다. 다 같이 starting with a silent prayer let us offer the friday night service to father god
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of the love and that knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. Let us sing hymn number one, two, three. The first Noel, the angel, did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, tending their sheep. On a cold winter's night that was so deep, Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. They looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far. And to the earth is give a great light. And so it continued both day and night. Noel, 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 Noel. Burn is the king of Israel. This star drew night to the northwest. Over Bethlehem it took its rest, and there it did both stop and stay, right over the place where Jesus lay. Noel, Noel, Noel. Born is the king of Israel. Then another is those wise men three, full reverently up in the knee. and offer there in his presence. Their gold and the mirth and frankincense. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. Amen. Let us pray for the service first for senior pastor. Amen.
Let us pray for the construction of the Grand Sanctuary. Amen. Let us pray for a senior pastor preaching tonight and for us. Elder Gilbert Che will pray for the service on our behalf afterwards. 주시겠습니다. 사랑해 아버지 하나님 감사합니다. 아버지 오늘 또 또한 사랑장 강의 열다섯 번째 말씀을 듣습니다. 듣는 바 모든 말씀들이 우리 안에 생명과 능력 되게 하시고 아버지의 참 사랑을 우리 마음 안에 새기며 또한 능력 삼아 영적인 사랑을 이루어갈 수 있는 축복의 시간 되게 하여 주옵소서. 조림 피곤 잠념을 새벽 다음을 저리시며 우리 하나님이 기뻐하시는 신령과 진정의 예배로 마칠 시간까지 함께하여 주옵소서. 감사합니다. 우리 구주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. Amen. Amen. Without any faith, we, uh, you said, so we cannot please you. Father God, tonight with the faith you pleased, we gathered together and offered the worship tonight. And the please received received uh, gratefully uh, with our offering the service and offerings. And the thank you for building our houses in heaven according to what we've done on here. And you always, you always said that this time is really ending of the time. And then Lord said always the thirsty. So ask us to save the souls and preach this gospel to reward the blood, the precious blood of our Lord. So please let us the practice the your world and the giving of the fragrance of the Lord to the people in the world. And thank you for letting us the found the uh, found ourselves in the evil nature in it the deep our heart and the change it a lot with your power of the world. So today's uh, today's lecture is the spiritual love of 16. Please let us take a breath of this uh, precious word and then uh, please, please preside. Uh, please may presider uh, lead this service with the uh, Holy Spirit and uh, receive the uh, all uh, special songs by uh, sung by the Emmanuel Choir and then the Sea Orchestra. And uh, may today's um, remember all the helping hands for the service and uh, pay them back with abundant blessing on the earth and the reward of heaven. Please give your same grace to all MEMI members and the viewers joining this service. And please be with us to the end of this worship service. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 5. 
Let me read it with a reverence. Love is patient, love is kind and not jealous. Love does not brag and not arrogant, does not act uncommonly, it does not seek its own, it not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered. Amen. An anthem by the Emmanuel Choir and the Nisi Orchestra is next. It's time for Mammy Magazine that delivers good news around the church. Today's Mammy Magazine is the missionary trip to join the anniversary of the Nairobi Mammy Church. Happy birthday to our Lord. Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. Dear brothers and sisters, Merry Christmas. Christmas lighting ceremony was held on December 8th in the garden of the senior pastor's residence. Face of hope, love, and the new Jerusalem. Lights colored in the garden of the senior pastor's residence. We feel the warm love of the Lord who came to this earth for us. These lights look like saints giving thanks to the Lord for His love.
The special song with the beautiful harmony of a thick and swan saw and the brother Guan Neng Yun added to the happiness and the joy of the lighting ceremony. Even though it was its winter, it was a warm day at 16 degrees Celsius. Just thinking about the birth of the Lord makes our hearts feel warm and peaceful. In fact, it's a very difficult time to say that the world is peaceful. As we think about the birth of the Lord, it's good to remember why the Lord came to the earth, thinking of the trend of the world at the end of time. I hope that not only we resemble the Lord and the recovered image of a God the Father we lost, but also spread the true gospel, giving off the fragrance of the Lord in the world. Congratulations on the birth of the Lord. I love you. Merry Christmas. It's so yummy. I'm happy. So delicious. Thank you. Suddenly, acting senior pastor prepared a tea party for the performance art committee. After the tea party, she encouraged the members to go to forward and invade the heaven with a heavenly hope by strength given by God. It was a so great time to join this uh, uh, lightning ceremony. Today is the first time I attended the lightning ceremony as a Magi, and I think it was a very meaningful time. And today is for the lightning ceremony and for my 17th birthday, so I'm grateful to volunteer at the lightning ceremony today. I'm very so happy to attend the lightning ceremony commemorating the birth of the Lord. Fortunately, it's not too cold. So, how did the local and the... Oh my gosh, sorry. Uh, I, I really happy to join this lightning ceremony lighting ceremony and then remembering the meaning of the birth of the Lord. So how did the local and the overseas branch churches decorate for Christmas? Let's take a look together.
Kenya is one of the about 55 African countries with the diverse tribes and cultures. It has a picture, pictures, quick natural scenery and the habitats for various wild animals allowing to you experience the beauty of the mother nature. It's sad that there's a place where the Lord's work is carried out, spreading the gospel of the holiness throughout the African countries. It's none other than the Nairobi Memin Church in Kenya. Following the active missionary works in Africa by the late Bishop Dr. Myung-ho Chang, Bishop Caleb Moon took office in September of this year and is reported advancing with a dedicated missionary effort in celebration of the 23rd anniversary of the church. Ten volunteers from the main church participate in this trip. Let's open the first page of the story. The trip for the 23rd anniversary of the Nairobi Memin Church in Kenya. The missionary trip team arrived at the Incheon Airport on the evening of the November 9th. Even though that there was a number of the members, they were able to complete the format formality so quickly and the trouble comfortably. See you later. It was a time to feel love of the Father, of Father God during the flight time of about 18 hours from the Incheon to Ethiopia and to Kenya, seeing the circular rainbow in the air. It was a happy day with a cool breeze and clear weather. We were at the Nairobi, uh, Nairobi Airport, Kenya. Oh, there were familiar. They were Bishop Caleb Moon and his members. What are they doing? They seem to um, wait for the members from the Seoul to welcome them. Tada! The missionary team arrived at the Nairobi airport. They welcomed the Mrs. Mrs. Yoon, the late Bishop Dr. Chang's wife, with uh, raising their voice and a big smile. Bishop Caleb Moon and his 50 members welcomed the team warmly with all their heart. I praise the Lord. There's nothing impossible when Father God stays with us. Elder Johnny Kim, the Vice President of the United Holiness Church of Jesus Christ, gave them warm regards on behalf of the Acting Senior Pastor Susan Lee and the members from the main church. On this day, they saw dragonflies, as if they welcomed the team in the sky. Congratulate on the 23rd anniversary of Nairobi Memin Church. Woo Bishop Caleb prepared a Friday night service. Greeting members are coming to the church one by one. Uh, Mrs. Yoon uh, coming, following. The members shook hands and hugged Mrs. Yoon while sharing their feeling about how much they've missed her. The missionary team also came to the church to offer the service of shaking hands or greeting saints of the Nairobi Memon Church. The missionary team had a short tea time with Bishop Caleb Moon before the service. 
Bishop Caleb shared his testimony about how he has worked since he came to Kenya in September. It's only been two months since I came here, but it feels like a lot of time has passed. I felt that my faith life in Seoul had many shortcomings. I lacked the love for souls before God the Father. I only thought about senior pastor. Without him, I could do nothing as a missionary here. In conclusion, senior pastor did all the missionary work in Africa. So, Bishop Myung Ho Chang said a lot of things uh, to me when I came here 14 years ago. One of those words was he said, if the senior pastor is not here, I am not here either. At the time, I did not know that. He meant the thought, oh, what does it mean? Is that the problem if I go too deep? But now I completely agree with that. what he said. Without senior pastor, there's no me. The worship time led by the local believers. The grace given by the Lord overflowed even more when the prepar uh, preparatory praise was sung by the praise leader and the chorus. It was a touching when the African members sang m e m e n praise songs in Korean. Everyone who attended the Friday night service felt becoming one in the Lord as they glorified God with the joyful praises and the dances. Even though it is the rainy season in Africa, many more believers than usual attended the Friday night service, making it more fulfilling time. The Friday night service began with a pastor Boaz's congratulatory message for the anniversary. There was a special song from the praise team of a Nairobi m e m i n church. Before the sermon, Mrs. Yoon and the missionary The uh, trip team from Korea were in introduced, and then the sermon continued. Bishop Caleb Moon delivered a mes uh, ser uh, message titled The Last Signs of the End of Time. He mainly used the example stories in his sermon so that the congregations could understand better and accept the words. By this way, he helped the members of faith level grow. Before the second part began, there was a ceremony to hand over the 100 copies of the Tian s w a l i books with, uh, written by the senior pastor. It was a time that the word of God would be spread more souls in Kenya through the s w a l i books. Part 2 started with a burning passion for the Lord. The children's men's and the youth missions teams made the event happy by delivering the special song. 
Special praises and the worship dance prepared by the each mission team of the church added happiness and joy to all who attended the service. The second part of the worship service continued until it was 4 o'clock, making them lose track of time. The worship service reminded them of the offering the Friday service passionately before COVID-19 pandemic in Korea. While preparing for the anniversary, many rainbow appeared over the Nairobi Mammoth Church in the Kenya. Since being dispatched to the Africa, Bishop Caleb Moon has followed in the footsteps of the late Bishop Chang and the work to help a believer's desire the holiness and the love the Lord even more. He also helped the believer be healed of the illness and to solve the problem, leading them to grow in the faith and to live a happier faith life with a handkerchief of the power of God. I see that the Father has blessed Bishop Caleb since he came to Kenya. His preaching is so great because it's based on a word of the Lord that senior pastor has taught us. Bishop Moon's first preach was the sermon title, New Begin. I could feel Father God loving and encouraging us through the sermon. We've experienced that everything is prosperous, taking steps of following the sermon. Still members are being changed by the Word of God, running this church steadily. We love Bishop Moon as he loves us. I'm grateful for Bishop Moon coming for us. I think the Lord sent him us to help us go to New Jerusalem. Bishop Moon taught us a lot for two months. We'll expand the kingdom of God by spreading the gospel to countless souls. We're looking forward to Bishop Moon's work that nurtures MIS and spreads holiness gospel all over Africa. So now we are praying for Bishop Moon, who leads a number of souls in Africa to heaven and the New Jerusalem, accomplishing the will of the Lord. On Sunday, November 12th, it was breezing and clear. The day was for the uh, 23rd anniversary service of a Nairobi Memin Church. Representative, past pastor, leaders from local churches and honor guests and the members of the church welcome the missionary team from Korea at the gate of the church. Bishop Moon, Mrs. Yoon, we are happy to have an anniversary. We love you all. Hallelujah. It was an event for welcoming and celebrating the anniversary. It looked like a festival. The first part of the worship service began with a full praise sung by the choir and the praise team. More believers filling the church than ever before gathered. In celebration on this anniversary, the full enthusiasm of the guests and the members attending the service filled the back of the church.
On this day, as usual, the congregation uh, welcomed Mrs. Yoon, the Korean missionary to, uh, trip team, and the pastors and guests from the various regions with the warm cheers and the shouts. Bishop Caleb Moon delivered the summon title. Bishop Cable, uh, Caleb Moon delivered the sermon titled The Last Church Imitating the Early Church. In the second part of the service, they watched the congratulatory message of the acting senior pastor, Susan Lee, on the video. Uh, the members replied, uh, clapping their hands, saying, yes, amen. Then, Elder Chani Kim, the Vice President of the United Holiness Church of the Jesus Christ, and the Dr. Nelson Makanda, Secretary General of the Evangelical Association of the Kenya, delivered a congratulatory message. EAK is an alliance of the over 900 churches, including Pentecostal and the Evangelical churches. And the Nairobi Mammin Church belongs to it. I got to know Mammin Church and the senior pastor through the late Bishop Chang, and I was uh, happy to meet uh, Bishop Moon, who was nearly appointed as the president of the United Holiness Church. Thank you, Pastor Susan Lee, for praying for Kenya and the began with us. Uh, I truly feel the Spirit of the God is with you, leading the church both domestically and internationally, giving great grace to many believers. Many young people live around the Nairobi Mammoth Church. We talked about the way to evangelize and grow them both spiritually and physically. Please pray for the Kenya and the EAK. Thank you again, Pastor Susan Lee, and may God's blessing be with you. As a special part of the second part, the appointment ceremony was held for Bishop Moon as the president of the United Colonist Church of the Jesus Christ in Africa. The congregation responded with the shouts and the cheers filled with the joy and the gratitude and Part 3 began with a Pastor Boyaz and Monica as a host. A special song prepared by the children, and students, the youth, and the women missions gave a glory to God. Father, would you like to take a moment? Three, 
We wrap up the 23rd happy anniversary with a commemorative cake cutting ceremony. The late Pastor Myung Ho Chung carried out the Lord's ministry in Africa to continue this. Now Bishop Moon is with us as the new president. I'm truly grateful to our church in the Korea for sending him. Churches here on the African co uh, continent gladly welcome Bishop Moon. We are also ready to support him as he preaches the gospel of the holiness to African continent. Bishop Moon has heard of the late Bishop Chang. Just like Bishop Chang, he wanted to teach us and all over Africa the gospel of the holiness. I was uh, also very moved to see that God wanted to continue the min uh, ministry of Mamein. I thanked God. In the future, I would like to open the MIS at the local church in the Coasty con uh, County where I am in the church. I wanted to enable many people to hear the gospel. Our new Bishop Moon let us see new vision in the future. Among them, there's something we are looking forward to is uh, Memin Academy launching soon. Learning at the academy that will be provided a great benefit to us because when our students, especially our youth, are well uh, equipped with uh, these uh, different skills, uh, their future will be bright. I also believe that it will help the church grow. We are all aware of the ministry in trusted it to us by the late Bishop Zhang. He even conducted the seminars, the revival meetings, and the crusade. I look forward to the keeping even more further explosively all over Africa. A commemorative photo was taken at the photo zone. Seeing the Korean missionary team beautifully dressed in a hanbok, members who attended the service asked to take a picture with them. Memmin is the best. Congratulations on the 23rd anniversary service of the Nairobi Memmin Church. The weather today is really great, and we visited here to attend the anniversary service. When we met the church members, we felt that we are one in the pastor's space and the power of God is here as well. Hallelujah. KTN Broadcasting Station, one of the Kenya's broadcast station of the staff, attended the service. Elder Chani Kim was requested as the interviewee, and a worship service was reported and on the news for days later on November 16th, raising the status of the Korea and the Mammin and the giving glory to Father God. In particular, the head of the Ford Party, one of the Kenya's political parties, visited the Nairobi Mammin Church in the person to celebrate the 23rd anniversary. I am the leader of the Ford Kenya Party in Nairobi City. Today, I am invited as a speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya and the leader of the party. I am also here to congratulate the anniversary of the Nairobi Memin Church in the name of the Azisha Plus Social Education Center. Nairobi Memin Church, as a partner of the Kenyan's government, has worked hard to develop the local community. We will continue to support the Nairobi Memin Church and do more work together for the development of the community, in particular, as instructed by the President, uh, it has devoted themselves to implanting the trees and other things. I would like to express my gratitude for this. I hope that God will bless you. The gospel of holiness echoes throughout Kenya. Nairobi Memin Church in the Kenya was overflowing with the unwavering love and the passion for the love. We hope that the large and the small fruits that have been bearing in Africa will come together and produce even more abundant fruits. 
We support the powerful step of the Nair Rebbe Memin Church we are covering all of the Africa with the work of a fiery Holy Spirit in the future. Hello, I'm Bishop Caleb Moon of the Nair Rebbe Memin Church. This time I was appointed as the president of the United Holiness Church of Jesus Christ in Africa with a great interest and a support from the senior pastor and the acting senior pastor. Now that I have come here, I see that footsteps made by the late Bishop Zhang, who devoted his, his life to his work, are so great that I am uh, eagerly following his path. We have many good spiritual weapons, right? The gospel of holiness, the power of God, our senior pastor shows, and the fervent prayers. We are now running hard, becoming one. Because the economic environment in Kenya is so poor, only about 10% of the youth at Nairobi Memin Church have jobs, and the rest are currently without jobs. So, in addition to spreading the gospel, just as the early churches shared the goods with each other and demonstrated the economic and the social power, here in Africa, we will run an academy to teach uh, technology to the youth from our church. And I hope them influence better in good ways each field of the society. To the whole country, this is one of them, uh, the dream I have. The most important thing is that when our belief, uh, belief the uh, senior pastor comes back with 100% of the power of the recreation and the leads the intercontinental revival crusade. We prepare for the revival crusade in Africa. Thank you all for your prayers and the encouragement. Hallelujah. Congratulations on the 23rd anniversary of the Nairobi Memmin Church. Senior Pastor will deliver a message titled uh, Spiritual Love 16. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, all saints from the branch churches and the local sanctuaries, just same viewers and all children of God who attended this worship online. Today is for the session 16th of the Spiritual Love. A Korean saying goes grind and acts to make it needle. It means if you keep on trying with uh, patience, you can accomplish the even uh, very difficult things. How much time the effort would be needed to grind a thick axe into the, such a thin and a sharp needle? Some may say, how much does it a uh, little cost? I would rather sell the axe to buy many needles. But, but there's someone who goes through this kind of effort for you. He's none other than our Father God. God keeps on guiding and nurturing souls like a grinding even hard steel. He endures with a person until he changes, even though it seems there's a little chance for him to change. Matthew chapter 12, um, 20, uh, 20 says the 
better the reed he will not break off, and the smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. To make each of us a true child of God, God is enduring with us again and again. Those who have come out as His true children understand this heart of God and that they love Him from the bottom of their hearts. People who don't know God the Creator have cursed at the God and been against Him, who is their master since they were created. God has patiently endured their ignorance for countless years, and this continued today to save worthy souls among them. Of course, there uh, may be difficulties from time to time to be changed into God's true children. So I urge you to think of the love of a God that is unchangingly waiting for you if you rejoice His love and give Him thanks for that. He will give you new strength. I encourage you to not give up in the middle, but keep on running your race toward the heavenly kingdom until the end. Furthermore, I pray the name of the Lord that you will accomplish the true love and become a precious fruit of the love of God. Dear brother and sister in Christ, it's sad. Love does not take into account a wrong suffered. What is the wrong suffered? It's something evil. Anything that is not in agreement with God's will is evil. Then let me explain in more detail what is this taking into account of wrong suffered. There are three general aspects, and I hope you will check yourself. If you find anything, I urge you to cast it off. If I were, uh, if I were to say to you, a deacon or an elder, you are so evil. You might be left jaw-dropped wondering why I would say such a thing. Even though you may not fully grasp why you're hearing this, try to discover more about yourself through today's lecture. The first is your thought that you want something to go wrong with other people. I think people in the case are so rare among the members of the Memin. The students who ranked second and the third probably once were uh, twice thought that the students who ranked first had a poor learning ability. I mean this kind of a thought. In business field or in relationship, people sometimes hope their competitors or someone they hate go wrong. For example, let us say you had a quarrel uh, with somebody, then you hate him so much that you think like, I wish he would trip and fall down. How evil a thought it is. Have you ever thought something in that way? Also, let's say something bad happened to a neighbor who you didn't have a good relationship. You might think, oh, good for him, or I knew it, that would happen to him someday. If you have a true, true love in you, you will never think of such a things. If the miserable things happen to your children, you would never think like that. Who would... Who would want his dear wife or husband to be sick or get into an accident? You would want your loved ones to be always healthy and free of the, any accident. When you have the spiritual love in you, you want everyone to go well considering them your child and the parents or sibling. If someone feels joy when other goings wrong or unhappiness proves that he or she never have a love with them. Some also want to know others' weakness and share it. Indeed, some people are eager to share others' weak points. There are many backbiters who like to eavesdrop.
gossip and spread it. What good does it to you to invest? Uh, what good is there knowing other people's weakness or secrets? It's evil nature that you desire to share others as something hidden and the, or their loophole. It's so bad. If you are at the gathering and someone starting talking negatively about the other person and you find yourself listening intensely, you should check your own heart. You should avoid hearing the something bad about others. Spiritual people turn around from the spot not to hear it. If somebody was slandering your parents, would you want to keep on listening to it? You would cover your ears to avoid hearing and give them a warn not to say that way. It's the same way when you hear about your children, your partner in that way. You would tell them to stop it right away. Of course, there are cases where you have to listen to know the facts about the person's situation. <clears throat> But the reason people tend to be interested in the, such a things is usually to slander or gossip about others. If you don't want to slander others, you would not like to hear the gossips or rumors. You are never interested in the talks. But Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9 says, He who conceals the transgression seeks love, but he who repeats the matter separates the intimate friends. The verse says, He who conceals the transgression seeks love. If you truly love someone, you cover up his or her mistake. If you keep bringing up his uh, mistakes uh, repeatedly, you might end up the, uh, driving a wedge between yourself and your close friends. Those who are good and have a love in your hearts will try to cover the fur of, of others. Even though you've been the taught not to share or listen to it, you're willing to do opposite. How weak you are. So what should you do? You just pull it out from your heart. Do anything such as fasting, vowed prayer until you root it out from your heart. Only then, goodness will be filled in you. In you. Also, if you have a spiritual love, you will not be jealous or envious when others are well off. There's a Korean saying that goes, if your cousin buys land, you get the stomachache. Do you have a stomachache when the business of your neighbors, including your cousin, is prosperous? The stomachache means feeling uncomfortable or jealousy. If you feel it, you should repent deeply and cast it off from your heart. What about this case? You run a beauty shop and your neighbor does it next to you, and her shop is more crowded with her customers. Should you feel ill? Having a stomach ache? How could your Father God bless you who have a, such an evil heart? Then, what should you do? First, you should be happy and congratulate your neighbor. Then, check yourself. If, it's a, if, uh, if your shop clean as uh, hers, or check if you need to learn moral skills, not being jealous. You can be grateful for her prosperous business and pray for your business going well. Being is, uh, inspired by the neighbor's success and the learning and the growing as a hairdresser. If you recognize her service is satisfied with the customer, so you just have to improve your service with your employees. That's the way to get blessing from God. 
If your cousin buys land and you love your cousin, then you should be delighted about it. But because you don't have a love, but have envy instead, you get a stomach ache. People usually don't like the fact that others are better off than they are. But if we have a special love, we want others to be well off and be loved. Romans chapter 12, verse 14 says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. In your face life, you always hear the word of the truth, but Have you blessed those who persecute you? That kind of a love should be in you. So bless those who persecute you. Bless and not curse. Do not curse, but let her bless. This means even for sake of those who persecute, persecute you, that you are too evil to hope. Bless of your family, your parents, your husband who persecute you. then with the shedding tears you pray God please help me please don't let my husband persecute me do you think God might give an answer if you pray while acting contrary to the truth will it be answered the word of God says that if you pray with a sin in mind God will turn away from you he will not answer If you pray with uh, such an evil in mind, will you receive the answers? So when someone like that comes, I always answer like, you should go to quickly the spread and uh, your problem will be solved. But those people don't even say amen, so it's frustrating, so sad. I told them, I told them how to solve your problem so they should say amen and quickly go to the spread and not be persecuted, but they don't even say amen. I pray in the name of the Lord that all of you will only desire for others to be well off and bless them, even though they are doing evil to you, so that you will receive a greater blessing. Second, what we have to check is back is the thought of the judging and the condemning others. Um, suppose you saw another believer going to the place where believers shouldn't go, then what would come to your mind? How can he do that? You may have a negative opinion of him, or you may wonder, Why would he go to such a place? But then, you change your thought and think that there must be reason. But if you have a spiritual love completely in your heart, you won't have any kind of evil thought in the first place. Even if you heard something that is not good, you wouldn't accept it, judgingly. First, you would think it's the best way possible. Then you wouldn't judge or condemn any person until it turns out. You don't need to judge or condemn until it turns out or until you check it directly. If you heard what you shouldn't have heard, you need to repent of it. In most cases, when parents hear some bad things about their children, how do they react? They don't easily accept it and insist that their children wouldn't do such a thing. In the same way, if you really love someone, somebody, you will try to think about him in the best way possible. However, nowadays, it is so easy to see people thinking and speaking badly about others. They think it's okay to slander and even criticize. It's not done only in personal relationship, but those who are in the public position also do the same. Even among the believers, there are many who easily judge and condemn and criticize others. They don't even try to see the whole picture as to what really happened. They don't even, uh, they don't even know the situation of others. Furthermore, they judge not with the Word of God, but only with their own thought. But what is the good will of God? 
James chapter 4, verse 12 says that there is only one lawgiver and the judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Suppose someone clearly did something wrong. To those who have a spiritual love, it is not important to decide between right and uh, right or wrong. What would be more beneficial for that person is the more important matter. They seek the way that person becomes prosperous and receive the love of God. Proverbs uh, chapter 10, verse 12 says, Hatred stirs up the strife, but love covers all tra uh, transgression. Of course, the more perfect love becomes, it cannot only cover the transgression, but it can also help the other person to be able to repent. You should also be able to teach the truth and to touch the people's hearts so that they can go the right way, being changed. You don't need to make an effort to see others' bright side when you accomplish the perfect spiritual love in your heart. You, you naturally love even a person with many transgressions. You would just want to trust him and command him. If you do not have any thought of the judging or commanding others, you will be happy with whomever we meet. If you don't condemn, everything is embraced with love, so you don't have any thought about the other person like, oh, they are looking at me in such a negative ways. Since they hate me, they would probably say bad things about me. You never thought this way. If you have a spiritual love in you, I pray in the name of the Lord that you will all accomplish the spiritual love quickly so that you will enjoy the happiness of the kingdom of heaven. The third aspect is all thoughts that are not in agreement with the will of God. Anything that is not in agreement with the will of God according to the word of God is the evil. Not only having someone, e uh, some evil thought about others, but also having any thought that does not agree with the will of God is evil thought. In the world, the people who live by the moral standards and according to the conscious are said to be living in goodness. However, even though they are said they are doing from good heart and the morality, actually some of them don't have to do with the goodness before God. Furthermore, some things are completely the opposite of the God's word. Only the words of God can be the absolute standards of the goodness. The truth that God, the goodness, who is goodness itself, identifies is the only the standard to measure the goodness. At the first part of the Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of the witnesses surrounding us, there are so many witnesses to testify to this fact, so many people testify to their blessing that they receive and to, uh, to the good fruits they bear when they live by the word of God. Likewise, anything that does not agree with the word of God, the only absolute standards of goodness is evil. It's because anything that does not agree with the will of God is a sin. Uh, John, uh, 1 John chapter thir uh, 3, 4 says, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and the sin is lawlessness. I will explain it in detail. If you probably understand that this is spiritual concept, it will be helpful for you in becoming sanctified. If you don't exactly know the spiritual concept, you cannot understand the Bible, no matter how often you read it. Generally, sin and evil are both untruth, which is against the Word of God, the truth. Let's say the two both untruth. 
They are both the darkness and the opposite of a God who is the light. But in more detail, they are different from each other. To compare this two with a tree, evil is like a root that is in the ground and is not visible. And the sin is like a branches, leaves, and the fruits. A tree can exist only with its root. Without roots, a root cannot have a branches, leaves, and or fruits. Likewise, the sins is uh, realized because of evil. So, evil has invisible roots in the ground because it's the ground. The roots are vis not visible. The same goes for evil. However, sin is visible because it comes with a certain uh, consequences. Because a man has evil, he commits sins. If you don't have evil, you cannot commit sin, right? You can't do something illegal. So there's no any lawsuit about you obeying the law of the, that country where you are. Evil is a piece of the nature that is in one's heart. It's a nature that is against the goodness, love, and the truth of God. When this evil is realized in a specific form, it is referred to as a sin. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 says, The good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings first what is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasure brings first what is evil, for his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. The wicked brings first what is evil, If they accumulate more evil, they will act more wickedly. If they pile up it less, they will act less. Therefore, the evil things that are in the heart are spoken by the uh, mouth, and the things that are done outwardly. When you say hurtful words to someone who you hate, there is a sinful nature of the hatred in your heart, and it comes out as in sins called bad words. Those who have only goodness in their hearts never speak so harshly, never speak bad words. They always say something good and never hurt others with the bad words, carrying others' hurt. Also, evil is any concept that expresses anything and any conditions that is against God. We say he is evil when he commits sin, but even though He doesn't do it, but still has a desire to commit sin, so we say he is also evil. When this evil is realized in a specific form, it is sin. Sin is to violate the law of the God, so we call it lawlessness. For example, God's word tells us to love, and if we hate, it is to commit a sin called hatred. God tells us to keep the Sabbath holy, and if we violate the Sabbath, it is also sin. Keeping the Sabbath is the most important law we have to keep, and when you violate it, it can be heavy crime. Likewise, a sin is realized and specified according to the standards called of the Word of God, which is the commandment. Thus, a sin can be categorized into specific things of the flesh and the works of the flesh, such as hatred, envy, jealousy, adultery. based on the word of God, namely the commitment. Just to talk about the sin or crime of this world, according to the against of whom they commit this crime, it can be against the nation, the public or the individual. Also, the magnet, uh, magnitude of the crime varies. However, that you have an evil in your heart does not necessarily mean you will commit a sin. If you cast off a sin to a certain extent, you will not commit sin even if, if some evil remains in your heart. 
at this time you can become uh, complacent and say I've achieved that this much but to become a completely sanctified we have to get rid of that this sinful nature deep inside your heart and even the evil that has been in our nature since birth God is perfect he has no blemish or spot so God is called God is perfect Even though we do not commit sin, anything that is not perfect is a form of evil in the sight of God. As you read in 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 22, abstained from the every form of uh, evil. It says, no matter how small or large, no matter what form it takes, get rid of uh, evil in all its forms. Only when we completely cast off all form of evil and accomplish the spirits and the whole spirits can we say we are fully sanctified. Above all, God is love. Basically, God's commitments can be condensed into love. 1 John uh, chapter 3 verse 23 says that this is his commitment that is we believe in the name of the, his son Jesus Christ and the love of one another just as he commanded us. What does believing in the name of uh, his son Jesus Christ mean? Does it mean you have to know the name Jesus Christ? It means you should believe in that Jesus Christ with your heart, not just knowing the name. When you believe in the name with your heart, you are bound to keep God's commitments. As you are willing to love each other, following the God's law, uh, believing in the name of the Jesus Christ, if you keep the God's law that you have to love your enemy, you can keep all His law in, in the 66 books of the Bible. Nothing is impossible. Therefore, all the laws of God is in love. Romans chapter 13 verse 10 says, Love does no wrong to neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It says, love does no wrong to neighbors, so only you do it to people the next door? It means love does no wrong to everyone. Why? Because it's love. So it says love is the fulfillment of the law. So you can keep the all, all words from the 66 books in the Bible. In other words, not loving is equal with the evil, sin, and the lawlessness. Therefore, to check whether you are taking into account the wrong suffered, you look back on how much love you have in you. To the extent that we love God and another soul, so we will not take into account the wrong suffered. Dear brother and sister in Christ, then how can we cast off a form of the evil? To cast off a evil, we must not even think of evil things. Also, we must not see or hear it. So you might experience that bad thought that came to your mind even, even though you didn't want it when you were a new believer. However, avoiding seeing something evil is easy. Even though it seems hard to control a bad thought coming to your mind, but not seeing, not watching bad things is easy, isn't it? Avoiding hearing bad things and speaking evil ones is also easy. It's up to you. It's totally up to you, and it depends on your will, so you can control yourself and avoid seeing, hearing, and speaking bad things. Even if we happen to see or hear, we should not try to remember or think about it again. We must not try to remember it. Obviously, we should never intentionally think of it or remember it. Furthermore, we should cast off even the thought that flashes through our mind.
we have to join the evil things. We, we should not join the evil things. Uh, 2 John the chapter 1, verse 10 to 11 says, If anyone come to you and does not bring this teaching, namely the teaching of the Christ, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. It is said that God is advising us to avoid the evil and not accept it. It's because a man of a flesh can be easily stained by evil. Men inherit a sinful nature from their parents while living in the world. People come in contact with so many untruths. Based on this sinful nature and the untruth, a person develops his personal characters or self. A Christian life is to cast off this sinful natures and untruth from the moment we accept the Lord. Just going to church, praying, and giving the tithe is not enough to fulfill your faith life. The more necessary key core in the faith life is casting off a sinful nature and untruth in your heart. Living in a life of faith means listening to word, receiving the grace, of being enlightened, uh, putting your mind to God's will, doing it, and abandon, abandoning sin. This is a life of faith. To cast off this sinful nature and the untruth, we need a great deal of the patience and the effort. Because we are living in the world, we are more familiar with untruth rather than the truth and with the flashy things rather than the spiritual things. So it's relatively easier to accept, accept untruth and to put it in us than it is to cast it off. For example, it is easy to stain a white dress with a black ink. But it is very difficult to remove the stain and make it completely white again. Also, even though this look, looks like a very small evil, it can develop into big evil in a moment. Just as Galatians chapter 5 verse 9 says, a little leaven the whole lump of the dove, a little evil can spread to the whole church. Therefore, we have to be cautious even about the little bit of evil. To be able to not think about evil, but cast it off completely, we have to hate it. You must hate evil unconditionally. First part of the uh, Psalm, chapter 97, verse 10 says, Hate evil, you who love the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8, uh, verse 13 says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you passionately love somebody, you will like that the person likes and you will dislike what the person dislikes. Even between the married couples, let's say you really love each other. Let's say you couldn't live without your husband or your wife and you couldn't live out if that case, the two of you will agree well. You like a salty food and your partner likes a bland ones. Then what does you say? Are you just being stubborn on your part? You cannot ask your partner to eat food just the way you like it. Why? You love your partner so much. You will eat according to your partner's taste no matter it's too sorry or bland to you because you love your partner. If your partner loves you, then what happens? Your partner also try to eat the way you like. That, but what if you couples taste so different? You need to find the consensus. You like a bland food and your loving one likes salty. Then take about it each other, then you can control the amount of the salt that goes into your food. The result that you ended up eating a little saltier food and your partner eats less salty food. Like this way, your relationship will last while loving. If you do this, there will be no quarrels between you and your partner, and there will be no excuse for differences in personality.
When a couple has a similar personality, it can actually be bad things. If you're both inter, uh, introverted, you won't talk at home and will only read the newspaper or do your own work. What if both are rough? Wouldn't there be a fight every day? So I mean, if married couples are uh, married couples have a similar personality, it could be kind of a problem. So. Marriage is a life in which people with a different personalities meet and come to an agreement. This is the best kind of a couple. It's a true happiness to compromise and adjust to each other like this. If a husband demands obedience unconditionally, the wife will feel very uncomfortable. Also, there are cases where a wife asks her husband to do whatever she wants if he loves him. So, if you love someone passionately, you will like what that person likes and dislike what he or she dislikes. Likewise, if you love God, you will keep the commitments. When God's children who have received the Holy Spirit come a n the Holy Spirit grows in them, so in their hearts they, will, uh, they feel afflicted. Then they realize that God hates those things they did, and they try not to commit sin again. Also, as they love God more deeply, they would want to resemble God completely and go near to Him. They try to cast off an even little form of the evil and not accept any more evil. Evil is such a useless thing. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8 says, He who saws in q u i n i t y will reap the vanity. Those who saw evil will reap the disaster. Ultimately, the result of evil is disaster, test, tribulation, disaster comes, people get sick, things go wrong in business and work. As if we saw evil, we will reap the trouble. Disaster, uh, a disease may come on us, our children or our family. We may face the accident. We may live in the sorrow due to poverty and the family problem. It's according to the, the verse, Galatians chapter 6-7. Of course, the troubles may now appear immediately before our eyes. In this case, when the evil is piled up to a certain extent, it may even be afflicted in our children later. Because the worthy people do not understand this kind of a rule. They do many evil things in everything. For example, they consider it normal to take a revenge against those who did harm to them. But Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22 says, Do not say, I will recompense evil. Wait for the Lord, and He will save you. But what about you? Do you feel guilty or not listening to this verse? Except the people who went to the Spirit, most of the saints who listened to this verse might feel guilty. Even though you don't express it outwardly, you may want to repay evil to someone who has done evil to you. But the Word of God says, Do not say, I will recompense evil. Please don't think about the repaying evil. Just wait for the Lord and entrust it to God's will. It says that God will save you. In other words, God will take care of your stuff. God controls the life, death, and the fortune and the misfortune of the human history according to His justice. Therefore, if we do the good according to the word of God, we will definitely reap the fruits of the goodness. It is just a said promise in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6. But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commitment, I urge you to always accumulate goodness in your everyday life so that you will always be healthy, receive the financial blessing, and live in the hope of the heaven, peace, and the joy.
To cast off evil and to keep ourselves from evil, we have to hate evil. Please keep this in your mind. You have to hate evil, then you will cast it off. And on top of that, you have to have two things in provision all the time. They are the words of God and the prayer. Without these words and the prayers, it's of no use. Your soul can't do well. You can't be born again by s p r e a d These words and the prayers must always be followed. When you meditate on the word of God day and night, we can drive away the evil thought and have a spiritual and good thought. We can understand the method as to what kind of act is act out of the true love. Also, as we pray, we meditate on the word of it even more deeply so that we can realize the evil in our words and the deeds. When we uh, pray fervently with the help of the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, we can rule over and cast off evil in our heart. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you will quickly cast off evil with the word of God and the prayer so that your thought and the words will be full of one, only one. Let me conclude it, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, chap- uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 says, And above all things have a fervent love for another, for love will be cover a multitude of sin. What kind of a problem do you have in your life? After all, the key to solve all problems is love. When we first love our brothers and forgive their transgression, God will also forgive a multitude of the sin of ours. He will also solve most of the problems that are caused by our sin. You already know what love is and what is to love. I urge you to more diligently love from now. From now, I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be near day by day to the peace and the blessing that God of our love is giving to us. Let's pray, keeping in mind today's lecture. As we receive the senior pastor's prayer for the second video, place your hands on the yellow or weak parts of the body, and if you are not sick, place your hands on your chest to receive the answer by faith. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works and transcend the time and the space on those who are receiving the prayer through the GCN Internet and the satellite TV in branch churches and the local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from the heart to drive away the negative thought and the doubts and the old past and the trials. From head to toe, all organs, joints, nerves, the tissues, and the cells, or whatever the sick part may be. Burn them with the fire, uh, fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan, all diseases, germs, and the viruses and infirmities, go away, light come. Please scorch all their incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria, all infectious diseases, including cold, flu, and the fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them all. Heal them of all stomach, lung, river, b r i s t urine, and the intestinal cancer, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral stroke, high and low uh, blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and the heart, lung, and the women's disease, and all inflammations go away. 
healed them of polio struck arthritis and uh, herniate the disc back pain the headache the neurosia and all other pains that disappear epilepsy autism depression neurosis and other mental diseases go away all kinds of paralysis are loosen get up the walk and leap let us I see and let the ears hear, let the blind come see, the let deaf hear, the mute speaks, heal them of after effect of all kinds of accidents, fix their bro uh, broken bones. Restore them from burns, let the heat and the burning sensation go away. Father, please have all skin be intact. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and the substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, the tissues, and cells, and the regenerated bring the death back to life. Give them the blessing of the conception. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil, evil forces of the heavenly places, and their servant, go away. Go away, evil and clean force, and the disciples spreads something uh, early and the all forces of darkness loosen the bonds of the weakness darkness go away light come Father God give them the strength to cry out in a prayer apart to cast off a sin and to become a sanctified as their souls prosper let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problem with a fire wall of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly hosts and the angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect uh, all their children, their families, the workplace, and the business field. Please let students have a wisdom and the smartest and have them be willing to study with fervor. Please do not them to lose their heart to worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they do, let them live a life glorifying the your Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met the experienced God that received His answer and the blessing. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us give an offering to God, singing, Mammy Praise 57 for offering.
Here are our offerings for Thanksgiving sanctuary uh, construction. Also, we give the offering for uh, vowed offerings for missionary, for GCN. Please uh, accept them gladly and then lay your hands on them and please bless them so that good measure to press down the port into your lap. Please uh, fulfill our heart's desire and answer our prayer. Also, bless us with a 30 times, a 60 times, and a 100 times according to what we've done and son. In the name of the Jesus Christ, our Lord, I pray. Amen. Let us close the Friday night service with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, so you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and or forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And then do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.